Have you been to the movie theater lately? The hottest trend in film is not horror or romantic comedy. It's larger-than-life stories featuring flawed yet noble icons overcoming the odds, triumphing against evil, and demonstrating great character and moral fiber while they do it. Comic book heroes are more mainstream than ever before. But, while well, Thor may be able to bury an axe in the heart of Thanos, have he and his ilk done anything to make the real world a better place through their influence? It's a complex question, one that's near and dear to my nerdy little heart, and one I want to explore today. I think the best place to begin is with my own story, which starts <laughs> with this adorable and not at all embarrassing picture. Yes, when I was five years old, I created my own costume so I could become the fastest man alive, The Flash. All in all, I think I did a pretty good job. It was an age before Amazon, so all I had to work with was a pair of red pajamas, a swim cap, and a few yellow pipe cleaners. But why did I want to dress up as The Flash? Well, first, he had a great, memorable look. Second, he could run really fast, which I thought was better than flying. And third, most importantly, The Flash was cool. A few years later in school, I had an assignment to write a letter from my adult self to my kid self on what I would end up doing for a living. Fifth grade me did not even hesitate to decide that I would be working at Marvel Comics. I had no idea what I would be doing, but like The Flash, I knew that Marvel was cool. As a side note, I did also write that I would be a professional basketball player. Shockingly, I never made it to the NBA. A combined lack of height and coordination halted any progress in that direction somewhere around middle school. But at the age of 25, I did make good on one fifth grade promise to myself when I got my literal dream job at Marvel Entertainment. <laughs> However, a decade plus and thousands of comics read had changed my motivation a little bit. No longer was I in it simply for the cool factor. I wanted to make a positive difference. And I was convinced that working at Marvel was the way to do that. I want to talk today first about the good comic books have done, not just for me, but for many people on a small day-to-day -day scale. Second, how the history of comics demonstrates the durability and power of these characters and concepts. And third, let's look back at that idea that superheroes as part of mainstream pop culture can make the world a better place. The comic that changed everything for me was X-Men. When I first saw X-Men the Animated Series on Halloween night in 1992, I was hooked. I loved the costumes, I loved the powers, and I loved the characters. The premise of X-Men is that there exists a super-powered offshoot of humanity called mutants. Ordinary humans hate and fear mutants because they worry they're here to replace them. The mutant race is split. The more optimistic group goes with Professor X, who dreams of peaceful coexistence with the human race. Meanwhile, Magneto rallies a more disaffected contingent to try to strike first against humanity before they can exterminate mutants. Around the same time I discovered X-Men, I read something that gave me a new perspective. The autobiography of Malcolm X. Now, you may be wondering how a 10-year-old white kid growing up in an affluent, mostly Jewish, Boston suburb came across this particular book. I went to the library. I asked the librarian, which book has the most pages? And thinking that this would make me smarter than everyone else, I proceeded to read the entire thing. <laughs> Did it work? The jury is still out, but it gave me a new perspective on my favorite cartoon and comic book. 
I could see now that in many ways, Professor X represented Dr. Martin Luther King Jr. That Magneto was a stand-in for Malcolm X himself, and that the whole mutant thing was a metaphor for racial discrimination. This is pretty heavy stuff for a 10-year-old. X-Men has always preached a message of inclusivity that's more relevant than ever in today's climate. Wolverine, Kitty Pride, and the rest have been role models for generations of readers and viewers, showing not only that it's okay to be different, but that you should accept those who are not like you. Look, these characters are fictional. I recognize that. It doesn't mean they haven't lent bravery to the gay teenagers struggling to come out to their parents, or taught tolerance to young people welcoming a minority student into their school. I contend that you are far, if you are a true fan of the X-Men, it's impossible for you not to at least be a better person, or at least try. It's ingrained in your mind that those dissimilar to you are not wrong or evil, but that they have value and that they are to be embraced. Comics taught me all of that, and I was sure that given the chance, they could do the same for anyone else. Now, with all due respect to Superman, Batman, Wonder Woman, and of course, The Flash, I believe that Marvel has the best characters in comics. There's a reason that Iron Man, Captain America, Hulk, Black Widow have become international movie stars, and it lies squarely on their imperfections. Marvel heroes are not perfect. They are selfish. They are arrogant. They make mistakes. But at the end of the day, they rise above their flaws to do the right thing. Now, nowhere is this more evident than in the story of Marvel's most popular hero, who but for a few different choices could have just as easily been a bad guy. The origin of Spider-Man has been told countless times, not just in comics, but in multiple movies and TV shows. Teen outcast Peter Parker gets bit by a radioactive spider, giving him superpowers he plans to use to become famous and make money. When a criminal rips off a guy who just stiff peed on a payment, our would-be hero lets that self-same crook go, and in a tragic twist, the burglar then breaks into Peter's house, murdering his beloved Uncle Ben, leaving the lad without a father figure. Here's the thing. That doesn't sound like the origin of a superhero. It seems like the beginning of a supervillain. Peter Parker has a tough life. Getting superpowers doesn't do anything to make matters any better. If anything, it makes matters worse. If by all means, this guy should want to take his new abilities and use them to seek vengeance on a world that has wronged him. But he doesn't. He chooses to honor his uncle's memory he chooses to do the right thing. None of these choices win him any acclaim, either as Peter or as Spider-Man. In his civilian identity, he's still victimized. As a costume crime fighter, he has his best intentions constantly questioned by the very people he's trying to protect. And yet, despite the fact it hurts more than helps, Peter stays the course. He heeds the lesson he learned from his uncle that with great responsibility, with great power, that with great power comes great responsibility. It's not just a solid tagline, it's words to live by. Spider-Man's been an icon for Marvel and comic books for many, many years, but other characters are just now coming into their own. During my decade at Marvel, a new character emerged called Kamala Khan, AKA the new Miss Marvel. Kamala is a Muslim-American teenager growing up in New Jersey, trying to balance her family's traditional values with a desire to fit in in high school. And then she gets superpowers. Kamala has been almost universally embraced by comic book fandom. Not long after I first came to UNLV, a Muslim woman explained to me how special and important it was that a popular superhero looked like her and fought for social justice. At the same time, whites, blacks, and everyone in between love Kamala because she's a great character with a winning personality. This symbol of the Muslim community is not exclusive to that group. She's a hero for anyone who appreciates her quirky sense of humor or her optimistic worldview. She's a character that brings people together despite their differences. 
because that's what good superheroes can do. Those are a couple broad examples of superheroes doing good out there in the world, but let me frame things more personally with another story from my time at Marvel. In 2012, the mother of a hard of hearing four-year-old boy named Anthony came to the company with the following dilemma. Her son would not wear his hearing aids to school, citing that superheroes do not wear blue ears. Blue ears being what he called his hearing aids. A team of Marvel staff and editors scrambled to create a new character called Blue Ear, a hearing impaired hero who used his listening device to sense danger. Needless to say, not long after, Anthony was back at school wearing his hearing aids, a custom comic featuring Blue Ear in tow. The good that the comics medium can do. So those, again, are a few examples of the good comics can do, of why superheroes are a positive influence on society. But before we get to the more lofty stuff, let's do a quick history lesson examining where these characters came from and, more importantly, why they're not going anywhere. In the golden age of the 1930s and 40s, Superman and the like moved millions of comics popular because they fought Nazis and other enemies of America. By the 50s, comics came under attack, from critics who argued their corrupted influence over the youth of the nation. Luckily, by the 60s, a resurgence in superheroes called the Marvel Universe, as well as a bombastic Batman TV series, brought comics back from the brink and set them up for bigger things in the 70s and 80s. In 1991, X-Men number one, a new volume featuring the classic characters, sold 8.1 million copies, a milestone that stands to this day and that you can read about in the Guinness Book of World Records. According to a Los Angeles Times article from this period, there were over 5,000 comic book specialty shops in existence in the United States alone which makes it all the more insane that only five years later, in 1996, Marvel filed for bankruptcy. In the wake, several smaller studios went under as well, and over half of those 5,000 comic book shops were wiped out. But, as we know, Marvel did not die. Neither did comic books, and neither did superheroes. I say that these concepts are too important to go away simply because a company runs out of money or a guy with a degree says they're dangerous. These concepts are resurgent because they matter. They are our modern day mythology. They paint a picture of the people we can be if we aspire. Which brings us to today. Hmm. Today, as I said when we started, movies featuring comic book superheroes are the biggest thing in pop culture, period. Characters like the Avengers and the Guardians of the Galaxy have achieved mainstream acceptance on a level unseen since World War II. Avengers Infinity War is the fourth highest grossing movie of all time, having made over $2 billion worldwide and counting. It's the fastest film to ever reach the $1 billion threshold. Released only a couple months earlier, Black Panther made $1.3 billion, but its cultural significance cannot be understated. When I was a teenager, sneaking off to the comic shop to buy X-Men, I could only dream of a utopia where people knew who Groot was. <laughs> where people wanted to live in Wakanda. Working at Marvel in 2008, I quietly crossed my fingers hoping the first Iron Man movie would be a success, both for my job's sake and because I wanted people to embrace these characters. I was convinced that if society would simply accept superheroes, it would solve all of the world's problems. Obviously, it's not that simple. X-Men can sell millions of comics. It doesn't mean the end of racism or discrimination. Wonder Woman has been preaching a message of peace for over 70 years, and still we have war. People love Superman, Spider-Man, Iron Man, Batman, The Flash, Black Panther, and so on. But sometimes it feels like their teachings fall on deaf ears. Yes, 
Comics have done good things, as I've explained. But I'm idealistic enough, or maybe naive enough, to think that they can do even more. Remember the five-year-old kid who liked The Flash just because he was cool? It's easy to get caught up in the big battle sequences, in the flashy costumes, in the witty one-liners. It's easy to look past the morality, the nobility, the lessons to be learned. There's nothing wrong with thinking superheroes are cool. They are. But please, if you take one thing away from what I've said today, Dig a little deeper. Scratch the surface. Understand that these fully realized fables featuring some of the greatest characters in all of fiction can do more. They can inspire you to be your best self, to make a difference. Getting back to the question I asked, have Thor and the rest done anything to change the real world for the better? Ultimately, the Avengers can only save their world. It's up to us to change ours. Thank you.